Thank you. Um, another question. Please characterize how you would represent this district versus the way it is being represented by um, our representative now. That's a difficult question because just as my wife might act in her own self-interest, neighborhood groups sometimes act in their own self-interest. Uh, I have attempted to reach out to a variety of neighborhood organizations. I'll leave out the names. I've been told to leave. You're not welcome here. We're an apolitical organization, which really means we're in favor of the incumbent or we're scared of the incumbent. If you invite me to a meeting, I'll show up. Now, there are limits on that. Amos, uh, uh, Afternoons with Amos. I actually like Amos Brown. First place I went when I announced was I went on the Amos Brown show. Ironically, he had no callers because on social issues, surprise, surprise, I actually agreed with Amos on some things and even asked him if he would be my campaign manager. He quickly went to a break and said, thanks for coming. <laughs> when Amos, and I said, I'll come back any time. Uh, because I recognize that District 8 is a diverse group. It's rich, poor, black, white. Uh, it's family uh, by a variety of names. And I really don't care how you define family. I define it in the broadest sense of the word. Um, I think that by going on Amos, it should demonstrate some commitment uh, to look at that there is a different perspective to things and I should listen, even if I don't necessarily agree with Amos on everything. And I appreciate that uh, difference of opinion on a variety of things. One thing I couldn't do for Amos, though, he sent me a letter. I don't know, how many people know Amos? I know him. Okay. Amos sent me a letter, and, and, not to take, and not to take anything away from it, he has a high opinion of himself. I think, we, I think Amos would even acknowledge that. He sent me a letter, and he said, Kurt, your time to come on my show before the election is October 15th at 1 o'clock. And I uh, said, okay, thanks, Amos. And he also said that it would be very difficult to reschedule. And I said, well, I sent him an email. And I said, Amos, here's the deal. Uh, my daughter uh, has a field trip that day. We're going to the pumpkin patch. Can I come in on some other date? And, and to his credit, he said, hey, why don't you come in on October 17th? So in that instance, I put my family ahead of politics because it was just one radio program. And, uh, and we could reschedule it. So there are instances, to be quite honest, people say, what happened, you know, people were telling me, what happened at the city county council meeting last night at 8.30? And to be quite honest, I have young kids. Uh, I know that I can look at the tape. I can assure you that the, the party people will send me a copy of it if I ask. And I can see what happened, and I did. Uh, but at 8.30, uh, well, I tucked my kids into bed at 8. I was probably falling asleep by about 8.45. And my wife was probably asleep at nine. So uh, to be quite honest, it's very important. I'm not obsessed with uh, politics. Uh, I view this as representing my neighborhood, and it's not something I dream about or hope for some higher office. Uh, to be quite honest, my personality is such that I probably couldn't get elected to higher office because I tell people what I think and not what they want to hear. Uh, thank you, Kurt. Um, are there any questions? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, earlier in your speech or presentation, you mentioned that uh, you hadn't formed an opinion about property taxes, whether they should be abolished, whether we should have other taxes to replace them. And yet you said, absent property taxes, you wouldn't have a chance in this election. That's so true. Can you reconcile the two? I can. People, people are upset, understandably so, about property taxes. I wish they were upset about taxes. Because whether you call it an income tax, a sales tax, or a property tax, it's all a tax. I'm not going to lie to the voter. And I think that's what sometimes candidates do. They know you're upset about property taxes. So they say they can do something about it. I don't believe that as a councilman, I can do anything directly. All I can do is talk to the other Republican uh, uh, people over at the General Assembly and say, let's abolish property taxes. If you tell me that you want to abolish property taxes, I'll be able to pick up the phone and make a phone call. But to be quite honest, you're much stronger than I am because I'm not truly a party person because a party person doesn't run against Monroe Gray. Some people would call me a sacrificial lamb. They'd be wrong because I'm in it to win. 
So I'm not going to fib to you and it's say. Not fib. It's not fib. I, I, I don't believe that having a, a feeling that I'd rather see a sales tax and income tax is against taxes or for taxes. You, I think it's a viable solution to be pursued it, until it cannot be pursued it, to abolish property taxes. I, I appreciate the question. All I'm asking, I guess, is. And you say, well, you make a phone call and do that. So we can count on you for a phone call. Well, I'll count on the phone call to put you in touch with somebody that can pursue your agenda. But I cannot. It's, okay. I mean, no offense to you. No, no offense to you. But it's, it's kind of like asking me where I stand. I mean, there's some people. And I've even been asked this question. I think it's a silly question. But you're the voters. You get to decide what you vote on. Maybe you don't like the fact that I'm bald. I've had some people that say, hey, you need to grow your hair out. You kind of look like a skinhead. And I'm like, hey, I'm bald. So that's why I shaved my head. Uh, I'm a Catholic. They see me in church. And so I had one person said, Kurt, where do you stand on abortion? And I specifically said, you don't want that answer because it shouldn't impact your decision about whether you vote for me. And they said, oh, yes, it, yes, it does, because you could zone Planned Parenthood out of Marion County if you wanted to. I said, I'm sorry, I'm just not that uh, conspiracy uh, oriented. I never even thought of that. Have no intention of doing that. And the same is true of property taxes. I know directly that city county council cannot alter the funding source for how property taxes are raised. Call Teresa Lovers if you live in Teresa's district. Call David Ortlicker if you want to talk with David. Call the people that can change the revenue generating mechanism. But I'm not going to sit here and BS you and tell you that I can do something about property taxes. What I can do is limit spending because here's how the budget comes about you have a budget from all the taxing districts in Marion County okay and these rates are not some they're the end product of it you looked at the assessed value and you look at everybody's budget and that's how you come up with a rate so it's simple math if you have a smaller budget you will have a smaller tax rate Sorry. It's okay. sorry. I hope I wasn't. My name is Kurt, and my wife tells me I can be Kurt, so I'm sorry I was Kurt. Uh, let's everyone thank Mr. Weber.